Uh, Mr. Assistant City Manager, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I um, have a couple of items on the public agenda. Uh, Mary Dean and Rex Rutledge were both requested to speak to the council. On page two, uh, new council business have amendments to the record ordinance. Uh, clarifies some sections of the Lord ordinance related to uh, licensing storage. Also creates a mechanism for annual fee increases. Um, staff has been working closely with the industry uh, representatives on the ordinance changes. Top of page three, uh, charter ordinance amendments related to secondhand dealers. Assistant City Manager Troy Anderson has been working on this and will make the presentation. Uh, the goal with these amendments is to remove burdens, uh, not only to local businesses, but also uh, enforcement um, by WPD. Item number three is agreement with Shields uh, related to the renaming of the Strikers uh, Sports Complex. A five-year, $625,000 agreement, $125,000 annually. Um, the agreement names or lays out requirements of each party. Um, so excited to bring that forward to the mayor and council. Item number four initiates funds for athletic court uh, renovations throughout Wichita. Item number five initiates funding for playground re renovations. Excited to bring forth item number six related to a parking and multimodal plan. Um, this plan has been in the works for several years. It was interrupted in part uh, due to the pandemic. Um, staff excited to finish that work and bring forward a plan um, and ask that uh, council review and endorse the plan. Item number seven, finance department will make uh, December or fourth quarter 2022. It's a presentation of its quarterly. on four or five that I want to highlight. Um, going to page seven uh, of the consent agenda, um, contract amendment related to proc wetlands, specifically related to art consultation services. Uh, item 3B on page seven, something that Councilmember Johnson is probably very excited about, <laughs> uh, deals with a uh, grant of right-of-way easement uh, so that we can West Star could install transmission lines along the Redbud Red Bud Path. Um, this would prevent those transmission poles from being um, in place in the neighborhood. Very exciting. Okay. <laughs> Item number 4A is a design agreement with MKEC. Uh, council approved funding uh, for the agreement in February of this year. This is, um, uh, will bring forth a design agreement for approval. On page eight, uh, item number seven, uh, related to Project HOPE is an agreement with the Episcopal Social Services for a peer support specialist. Item number nine is the annual lease agreement for the farm and art market. Vice Mayor Council, those are the only items I'd like to highlight. Any questions or anything you'd like more information about? Any questions? Yeah, uh, Dante, since we <clears throat> do not have a meeting on the 28th because of our DC travel, our uh, travel is not approved on an agenda. We normally do that prior to taking the trip. That is not on this agenda, so that needs to be added. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. We'll get to work on it and get it added. That's one way travel for everybody but me. <laughs> I get to come back. Yeah, I just, I said to DC. I didn't say <laughs> I don't know, to maybe from. you don't want to come back though, right? <laughs> Any other items, Vice Mayor? Any other questions? All right, I think we're good. I think I saw Marley Carpenter join us. If there are any uh, questions or if Mayor if Council would like an update regarding a legislative session. Yes, sir, Marley. How are you doing today? Did you guys call on me? I couldn't understand very well. Yeah, yeah, we're ready for you, Marley. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, just a couple updates. 
um, one more week of committees before the House and Senate will be on the floor um, working towards first adjournment. The water bills are moving. There may be some positive amendments added to them next week in both the Senate Ag Committee as well as the House Water Committee. There is a briefing in the House Appropriations Committee this week on the WSU KU Medplex. There is lots of interest and questions on the project. Funding will be put off until omnibus, which is at the very end of session. Um, they're not expecting the full $247 million to be funded by the state. The child care bill is expected to be worked next week. Um, two affordable housing bills um, that would be helpful will be worked next week as well. Senate Bill 248, which is the full repeal of the food sales tax that includes the local portion, was not advanced out of committee this week because of lack of a motion. So that bill is dead. Senate Bill 309, the fund bill that um, was proposed by the Senate President to fill the hole for um, the full repeal of the sales tax, um, had a hearing this week in the Senate Ways and Means Committee. There was lots of opposition to the bill. Um, the Consumer Products Ban Bill has been amended to remove services and did advance out of committee. Um, it is expected to be on the House floor before the end of session. Um, the Scrap Metal Bill, the um, bill to renew the Scrap Metal Act, did pass out of committee this week and will run on the Senate floor next week. The Medical Marijuana Bill did not come out of committee this week, and the Fentanyl Strip Bill has also stalled. Um, Senate Tax Committee is discussing a uniform truth and taxation letter for all local governments as well. And as I said, there's one more week of committees and then they'll be on the floor entirely. Um, so, and the pace has quickened. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Any questions for Mark? Um, could you a little more background about the, I'm sorry, I guess the speaker's messing up here. Could you give me a little more background about the test strip bill stalling? Yes, yeah, so the, um, both fentanyl test strip bills did pass out of the House and are in the Senate. Um, there is not a lot of interest in the Senate in passing these bills to the floor or out of committee at this point. There has been um, a call that the entire law enforcement community does need to support this, including the DAs and sheriff's associations, and they have not um, supported this bill, these bills entirely. Um, so that is one reason they are not advancing in the Senate. Thank you. Thanks, Marley. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Vice Mayor, we have a presentation from um, Wichita Striker Soccer. Troy up here. Let me pull up the PowerPoint for you. So good morning, happy St. Patrick's Day, and I wore my special tie for the presentation today. So today I have uh, Larry Inlow and Timber Lee. Uh, they're gonna do a great presentation and talk a little bit about uh, the Striker Sports Complex. Thank you. Council, thank you for the time today. Uh, good morning. My name is Timber Lee. I'm owner operator of Wichita Sports Forum and operator of Striker Sports Complex. Um, how many, uh, just so I know, how many of you guys have been out there? Awesome. So it looks like everybody. Good. A um, little history behind Striker. Uh, I'm assume that some of you may not know the whole history behind it, but as you can see up here, uh, Tommy Peckham Field. Um, namesake of the, the, the complex is a 13-year-old young soccer player who tragically died in Europe while playing uh, the sport he loved, soccer. Uh, today, as you see on the top, top of the ticket booth, and as you pass through it as well, there is a bronze statue of uh, young Tommy Peckham heading a ball 
And uh, you know, it's 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 crazy. It's it's ironic that something so tragic can has led to something so magical out here. Uh, the Peckham family has been out there numerous times on the when we opened the complex and even through the process of it. They've been and we've been in communication with them, and they absolutely love that. Uh, as I said, something that has been such a source of of pain for their family has led to the enjoyment of thousands and, and hundreds of thousands of kids from really around the country to come and they see his namesake above the ticket booth. So that's amazing. Fast forward from, uh, you know, 2005 to 2016, uh, or I'm sorry, to uh, just a few years after that. Kevin Mullen and Barry Downing, two businessmen in Wichita, uh, generously donated the acreage that is now Stryker Sports Complex. From that, the city received it, created soccer fields, grass soccer fields, and a stadium that, uh, that was seen for many, many decades. Uh, it had been used and had been uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, so again, the community coming together around this, uh, this, this incident and creating something truly great. Fast forward to 2016. Uh, the group, uh, ownership group of Wichita Sports Forum, we had just opened. Greenwich Place, as you see it today, was nothing more than a field. And since then, all of the stuff that has gone, all the buildings, the development has since ensued from that point. Uh, Scott Raby at the time uh, and I got together and said, you know, what if we extend the Starbond District? What if we extend what's going on there today? Um, because uh, what you see out there today is, is one of the shining stars of what uh, the Starbond uh, represents. It is probably set to pay off or it is set to pay off early because of all the success and the development around that area. So it's been done very, very well. The previous several years were planning and designing and strategizing. Many of you in the room, Troy, uh, were a part of that conversations, trying to bring this to life, ultimately working with the state and the Starbond to extend that district. So since that date, March 1st, 2019, first, first game, first league game started and it has been kind of proverbially off to the races since then. Um, again, anybody in the room would love to take anybody on a private tour if they uh, would like. What you'll see out there, um, let's go to, no, actually we'll stay on this slide. What do I need to do here? Get forward. I should have asked that first, perfect. There we go. Perfect. Um, what you'll see out there is 11 total soccer fields, 5,000 seat uh, stadium, a full 11 v 11 for those that you aren't soccer players. 11 v 11 is a full size game, a full size field. And what I didn't realize, I guess, uh, naively so, is how much bigger a soccer field is than a football field even. <laughs> Those guys run miles and miles every single game. And so that stadium, that field indoors is 112,000. You see a small picture of it up here, 112,000 square feet. And just walking from one side to the other is a, is a task for some. So it is, it is truly uh, kind of breathtaking as you, if you haven't walked inside of it, if you're just driven past it, you need to walk inside. Um, a little bit more about K96 and Green, which I feel like I wanted to come in here and fully tell the whole story not just Stryker itself, because I feel like this is a truly a city asset that is recognized all over the country, but I wanted to come in and speak to it as well. Greenwich Place, Stryker, as you can see here uh, in the, on the right-hand side, upper left, is there highlighted in yellow. Greenwich Place is across the street. But what you can see here is the capitalism. We can see here is the impact that sports tourism has had, not only in this corridor, but also in the city as a whole. Millions and millions of dollars of economic benefit have come from the sports tourism that we've generated here. What's funny, I say funny, I'm a real estate developer by, by trade, is most companies that are outside of Wichita look at our market and they say, oh, let's come in with a smaller concept. P.F. Chang's did it, Top Golf did it, Dave & Buster's did it. They, come, let's, we see, they see the MSA, they see the population, you say, well, let's come in with a tiered down approach. And then we crush it. We crush it because the, our patrons and our people around Wichita and the people that are coming into Wichita have such an impact. You see the number one Dave and Buster's in a four state area. Michael's is top 78 nationwide. You know, Academy Sports number two, Target number one, 
over 3.5 million people. I'm on the Visit Wichita board, and Greenwich Place in this quarter is consistently in the top five of the areas attended by people coming in from out of town. And so uh, we love what this area is doing. We love what it's done. It's taken a lot of years of planning and development to get it there, but it, uh, it's exciting. Uh, let's see here, getting off my notes. This is something that we're very proud of. Uh, you know, at the, at the start with Stryker, we were tasked with bringing people not just from the east or the west or the south side of Wichita to Stryker. It was truly nationwide bringing people to Wichita. What this map represents are teams and people from, and I'm, I'm sure we've missed some, uh, you know, from coming some from places, but ones that we can actually quantify and know about. Those yellowed out states are states that have come here to Wichita for strictly or for specifically Stryker. And so we're very proud of what this represents. Uh, Larry and I just had a conversation uh, about the West Coast that is, uh, we, we, we could fill in pretty much the entire four or five more states over there in what's coming in the next maybe year or so. So very excited about what this represents. If we had an international map, Real Madrid, Spain would be colored in as well because of some of the connections that Larry's had. Larry's our director of programming and we've brought several teams and coaches and trainers from that area of the world to Wichita as well. Let's see. So 2022, uh, when we built the complex, there was a certain criteria, a certain need that we knew that we needed to, to get this thing off the ground. As, it, uh, as we opened and as we saw the, the need and as we saw the demand of what we had created, also with that comes new needs to accommodate the bids that we're going after. I mean, we are truly going after nationwide events, some of which I'll talk about here in a second, or actually Larry will, that, uh, that, we've, actually, that we've achieved and we've uh, won the bid on. But the locker rooms were one of those. Uh, in 2022, uh, the Starbond District, maybe giving you more detail here than you want, the Starbond District is still alive and well. There were funds inside of that district that we were able to bring some of that still over, I think it was to the tune of about a million dollars, to start uh, the locker room project. My ownership group chipped in about $285,000 on top of that to finish out the locker rooms. And what we created here was the one on the left is on the south side of the championship stadium field. And on the north side is a basically a duplicate of that. Both have showers. They are four locker rooms or two locker rooms that can be split into four. So you got American football, they'll use all of them for two teams. If you got soccer, you'll have four smaller locker rooms. As well, we have uh, referee showers, referee locker room, and a public restroom because we're always running short on restrooms. As you can see from all the porta pots all around the facility, it seems like it's when you have 10,000 plus people walking around there on any given weekend, there's a lot of facilities that are needed. Let's see what we got here next. Work in progress. Uh, I think I, I uh, heard in your notes, you guys will be uh, voting on this. Uh, I think it was next week, I think you'll be bring, bringing this to topic. And so I'll leave most of the, the detail for them, them but uh, the press box, as you can tell, if, if anybody's been to a, a high school um, field, the press box is probably three times, maybe more, that size. Uh, it works well for some things, but the left picture is the inside of it. There's no partitions, there's no divisions. As you can tell, we would definitely need to expand that to, to, to accommodate the, the, the things that we're going after, the programming. The, the number one need, and I know it's not as excuse the term as sexy as a, a big fancy new shiny press box, are backstop nets. And I'm really gonna let Larry get into this because coming from his background, really in life safety and also on the soccer aspect, the playability of the complex, these nets are imperative to not only, yes, the safety and the well-being of kids running around, we got parking lots right there, they're climbing fences to get balls, but also these, the bids that we're going after, and yes, these are bids, so all these national events that uh, we'll talk about, there is a bid process because we're not the only city in the country that would love this 
these millions of dollars of economic benefit to come to our town. So it is a boat race. It is a horse race to, sorry, no pun intended there, uh, to get these events to, to Wichita. And so these nets have uh, been needed for some time. It's probably the number one question we get when people fly in to take a to tour around Stryker is, where are your nets? Where are your backstop nets to keep balls from flying across the fields? Again, I'll let Larry uh, talk about that. So with that, uh, I'll probably turn it over to Larry here, uh, Director of Programming. As all of you know, in order to do great things, you have to have great people. And we have assembled a, a team at Stryker that are truly syndications across uh, team lines. There, are, there is no home of when it comes to the big clubs around town. Larry and his team has done a great job to making this available to literally everyone across the board, wherever you live or whoever club you're part of, how big or how small. So with that, Larry, come on up. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you for having us. Um, just to build off of what Timber had to say specific to these nets before we move forward is, our facility is bordered by 10 foot high chain link fence. Mom and dads don't like buying new soccer balls every week. So those little kids that shoot the ball and miss and they go over the fence are willing to climb that 10 foot fence and jump from the top to get that ball to make sure they don't get in trouble. Then they got to jump it back. I've seen adults jump it. So what they're risking is injury. They're risking getting cut. They're risking breaking bones as they land, um, you know, or maybe not even be able to get back over. Um, so those are some of the safety hazards we have with that. On one end of the field, we have our drainage pond. So if we have, hopefully, have some water soon, and that fills and a ball goes into it, we run the risk of somebody drowning. If they did try to go after that ball and something tragic happens, and that's something we don't want. On the other side of the facility, we have businesses along those perimeter fences that are getting pelted by these soccer balls that are going over there and they're not extremely happy about it. Their cars, their buildings, and things of that nature. These nets are something that are standard in a facility of our quality across the nation. So we're kind of playing catch up with trying to add these so that one, we're functional in our playability, but the safety aspect. So let's talk about playability. Playability goes with our fields are in line. So you have a goal here and a goal here. So they're playing in line. This shot misses, it's gonna interfere with this field of play over here. You can have that back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, you get into these national events that are bringing literally $4 million. When we get to the President's Cup that's coming in July, that's a $4 million impact in one week in our community. They're gonna come here and they're gonna see the distractions that's caused by other games being played and they're gonna go, mm, we don't have to deal with this in Tampa Bay, which is who we beat for this, Tampa Bay. So these are things that we need to keep playability. Now let's get into back to the safety side. You've got grandma, you've got grandpa, you've got mom carrying a baby. They're literally having to walk on a sidewalk that was designed to go behind two goals. So if they're gonna walk like this to protect, somebody misses and they're gonna get hit and something very, very bad is gonna happen. Let alone if you have little Johnny or Susie or whoever it is just playing, just playing while brick brother or sister is, is in the game. They get hit by a ball when the backstop nets could have saved all of that. Okay, it saves us in the long run from a tragedy and it certainly helps us in the long run for bringing repeat big business to Wichita. All right, is there any, any questions on that? Great, we'll move forward. Okay, so our attendance numbers. Since our opening, we have grown every single year, both in attendance, both in that and programming. Programming drives the attendance, which drives everything else in, in that corridor, which is fantastic. Right now, on an annual basis, we see about 1,030,000 people throughout the year. And those are people at, in Wichita spending money in hotels, in restaurants, um, you know, buying things at stores, and having a great time realizing how great Wichita is. That also is included in our local population because we need to take care of them as well. There's no secret that this facility is based off of pulling in people on tourism dollars and taking care of our local community because it's so great. So in that, those numbers uh, illustrated here by our youth league, we'll use that. When we first opened in 2019 on March 1, we opened that league that day with 240 teams. 
This spring, we completed our registration with 400. Those teams are not only local, they're from Kansas City, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, playing in our local league. This is not a tournament. This is them coming to us because of the facility and the competition they receive here. That's a big deal. Then we move on to our adult leagues because we take care of everybody. We take care of youth, we take care of adults. We get into the youth soccer ser uh, tournament series that we have throughout the year. Those bring in big numbers. Now, I'll, on the next slide, let me see here. No, nope. here we go. So here's some, some numbers from last year and I'm, I jumped ahead a little bit, but you can kind of see how it's illustrated here, how many times these regional states come visit us and bring them their money with them. There are numbers are always trending up in these and it's a positive thing for us to keep going in this direction with not only our tournaments, but our ability to use the facility to rent out to other people's tournaments. So we're not only serving ourselves with our own programming, but we're saying, hey, if you would like the opportunity to rent the facility, you may do so. And some, some clubs do that. They use that as their fundraiser and it still brings money to the city, which is a fantastic draw. All right, I'm gonna jump back here. Let's go here, all right. So on this page, whoop, hit the wrong button. On this page, it's just kind of a review, because um, this is what we're looking at as a year in review of 2022. You can see here, we've listed as many as we could fit onto this page of things that we do. Now, as you scroll through that, you're gonna see the fact that it's not just soccer. We've talked to so about soccer to this point, but the simple fact of the matter is, it's the striker sports complex now. It is not the striker soccer complex. And when I say it's sports, it's because we host football, youth football, adult football. We host lacrosse, we host rugby, um, we do flag football. We even have ultimate frisbee. And we, we get into the alternative sports of that. We've talked um, about bidding out for esports so that we could host them in the indoor building. So when we, when we look at this page, I want you to recognize the fact that all the different demographics that we cater to on sports, um, and it comes and it, it's wonderful because it reaches all cultural backgrounds, all financial backgrounds, it doesn't matter. The purpose of this facility is for people to come and play and have fun in a safe family environment, and that's what we provide here. Um, as you go through here, you'll see some big things. You'll see some things you, you probably didn't even expect. Baseball and softball. We're not a baseball softball complex. We don't have diamonds. But what we do have is a big, huge indoor building that we can paint the turf and allow those kids to play those sports when it's really cold outside so that they can play year round and fine tune their craft. So that, and that's really fun because that sells out so fast. We have college coaches come, they bring their, their speed guns, their, their recruiting. It's, it's a fantastic environment um, for not only soccer, but all the other sports, wrestling. I mean, we bring mats and fill the building with it. So the diversity of what we can utilize this facility for and have used it for is really up to our own imagination. And that's what I really enjoy about this job is so many things that we can do to make so many people happy um, and do what they enjoy. All right. So then we jump ahead to this year. So now we're kind of looking forward um, here. As you see, we, again, I tried as much as I could to fit as much as I could in there without uh, kind of overdoing it. But the big rocks um, of this year is that it's going to be Stryker's biggest year ever on programming, which means it'll, that, that visitation is gonna go up once again and I'm excited to see what that will be. When we look at this schedule here, um, the big rocks I want to make sure that you understand on how hard we work with Visit Wichita and our friends here in the city to go get these big bids is we're winning them. We're winning them. For the first time ever, we're holding the NAIA Men's National Soccer Championships here. We won that bid. For the third time now, we've won the bid to host the NJCAA Men and Women's Division I National Championships. National Championships in Wichita in November. 
And that's going against Florida, that's going against California and Texas and everywhere else where their weather is probably a little bit nicer. But what we have is a great community, a great corridor, a great support structure, and a fantastic facility. And that's what's doing that. So as you look through this, I want you to keep in mind the, act, the, the financial impact it's gonna have. I mentioned before the President's Cup that we have in July coming, $4 million impact. Those two national championships I just mentioned to you adds another million dollar impact in just those three alone, which leads me back to the improvements that we're going to get, hopefully, um, because then we can go after them more and those, those entities will bring us more business. The United Youth, United States Soccer Association, who's bringing us in the President's Cup, has more than just that event. We knocked this one out of the park. We could see two or three more of those events come to town. And then, and then we're at a whole nother level. All right? Okay. This right here is just the breakdown a little bit about the three big ones that I just told you about. President's Cup, first ever for the city of Wichita. NAA National Championship for Men, first ever city of Wichita. The NJCAA, we did that first one so well they asked us to do it again, so well they asked us to do it again. So those are good momentum builders for us to keep going after large events and taking care of our responsibility for the facility in the city. So I will close with this. It's more than just soccer there. So many people think striker soccer, striker soccer. And we're changing that culture of thinking to striker sports by everything we do. We get contacted all the time about other sports. Most recently, Pee Wee football. There's going to be a new league coming here. It's associated with the NFL and an NFL Players Association. And they want to be at Stryker. We want to accommodate them. It's just one of those things is a big, huge game of Tetris when it comes to our scheduling and making everybody fit. But our goal is to always have everybody there. Happy people, happy, people, happy feet at Stryker. That's it. And like Timber mentioned before, when I first took this position, it was a mantra for me to say to people, who really wanted to lay claim to Stryker was their facility, it was their home. No, no, no. Stryker's nobody's home because it's everybody's home. And that's just the way it is and that's how we've run our business since then. And it's been extremely successful that way. I am under no false pretense about the extreme balancing act between national and tourism dollars and taking care of our locals. I think we've walked that, that uh, line very well and we've catered to everybody that we possibly could. Um, with that, I'll stand for questions. All right, any questions? Yeah, you had mentioned that 10-foot fence. Have you or uh, Timber climbed that fence to get Negative. <laughs> <laughs> no, I take, the, I take the long way. I go all the way around. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's a tough deal because you'll get, you'll get the parents saying, no, don't do that, I'll do it. And... If they're my age or older, I don't want to, I don't want the landing yeah. of it. You know, I, I don't want to hurt myself. And it scares me when you see that, you know, and I understand so equipment's expensive and moms and dad gets tired of buying those soccer balls and whatever else, well, even footballs. So in our stadium, we don't have a catch net and we have actual uprights for football in our stadium because we do high school football there. The, they kick the, when they go to do their, you know, free kicks or even, you know, whatever on their extra points, it goes right out of the stadium. Um, one night we had a game that went to overtime and they just, you know, how they start right at the end zone and they go over and over and over again. Well, everybody was kicking. <laughs> Pretty soon they ran out of footballs yeah. and they had to wait till they collected them again. And, and I'm thinking, mm, we need that. You know, we need that. And then tie that into the press box. You want to work with multiple sports. The press box that we have that you saw, we cannot house home and away offensive defensive coordinators. So currently, this format is home team gets to be inside the box, away team gets to be on top of the box in the crow's nest. And so that's what we're talking about 
a place for offensive defensive coordinators for both teams, the operations staff to run the scoreboard and the PA, and then any press that needs to be in there needs to be housed in an appropriate area where that makes the game fair, where it's like that everywhere else. And so then we can go for high school state championships in football. We can go after NAI football championship games and build our, our reputation with those of being successful hosts and then go for even bigger and bring more to the city, which is always our goal. Well, if you get NAI football and Friends University ever gets back to where it was in the golden days, <laughs> we'll be there. There we go. There we go. I'm just trying to figure out what golden days those were. Can you give me those <laughs> years? A little bit of a loop there. Sorry. 2005, <laughs> six, See, I set seven. You up. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have any uh, announcements for the good of the group? All right, everybody have a good weekend. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day.